Welcome again. In this lecture, we will go into more detail of the process of allograft rejection as one of the important early challenges after transplantation. This histological image shows you the hallmark of acute cell rejection, namely an influx of inflammatory cells into the transplanted organ. Since T cells are the predominant cell type and are pivotal for the rejection process, this lecture will further present basic aspects of these T-cells. In this lecture, we will answer the following questions. How do T-cells recognize alloantigen? What is the difference between direct and indirect allopresentation? And which signals are required for efficient T-cell activation? In the lecture on MHC molecules, we've learned that these molecules can exist in two different forms, MHC class 1 and MHC class 2, and that the MHC peptide complex is recognized by the antigen-specific T-cell receptor. Class 1 is specifically recognized by CD8-positive cytotoxic T-cells. Class 1 presents endogenous peptides that will guide the immune system in the direction of a cytotoxic response such as required in the context of virally infected cells. MHC class 2, on the other hand, is recognized by CD4-positive T helper cells. MHC class 2 presents peptides from exogenous origin, and CD4 T helper cells are essential for protective antibody responses against extracellular pathogens, taken up by antigen-presenting cells. So, Cross-linking of the T-cell receptor, the antigen-specific receptor of these cells, determines which T-cell will be activated. This is also referred to as signal 1. Now we move to transplantation and ask the question how allo-reactive T-cells are activated in this situation. In other words, what is signal 1? The first form of allo-recognition is the so-called direct pathway in which recipient CD4 and CD8 T-cells recognize the foreign donor MHC class 2 and class 1 molecules directly. This form is unique for transplantation and is dependent on donor APC, since they have the highest MHC expression. The indirect pathway follows more the regular route of antigen presentation, in which donor MHC molecules are taken up by recipient APC and presented as peptide in MHC class 2 to CD4 positive T helper cells. For this concept, presence of donor APC in the transplanted organ and the influx of recipient APC during rejection is an important prerequisite. The following immunohistochemical staining of two renal biopsies nicely confirms this. It shows on the left presence of dendritic cells before transplantation and, on the right, the influx of increasing numbers of DC during a rejection episode. So once more, in direct presentation, recipient T-cells are activated by donor APC through direct recognition of the foreign MHC. This process can already take place immediately after transplantation. The reactivity is based on a cross-reactivity with this foreign MHC. This is because during thymic selection only T-cells with an intermediate affinity for self-MHC are selected. As a consequence, a large proportion of T-cells, estimates ranging from 1 to 10% of all T-cells, can show this reaction. This will include both CD4 and CD8 positive T-cells and include both naive and memory T-cells. Therefore, especially this response is responsible for the vigorous early cellular rejection. However, since donor APC will disappear over time, this response will also diminish. In contrast, more time is required to start the indirect pathway of allo recognition. This pathway is dependent on the influx of recipient APC and the uptake of donor MHC to present specific allopeptides in the context of self-MHC. The frequency of T-cells with this specificity is low, less than 1 in 10,000. Moreover, when this is the first encounter with a foreign MHC, 
only naive T-cell will respond. Although starting as a minor response, this type of T-cell reactivity should not be ignored. Over time, the frequency of these T-cells will increase and, moreover, it are especially these T-cells which are critical as T-helper cells for the production of anti-HLA antibodies. Now that we have extensively discussed the nature of signal 1, it is important to realize that this is not sufficient to activate a T-cell. For an effective T-cell response, at least two additional signals are required. Antigen-presenting cells should also provide signal 2, the co-stimulatory molecules CD80 and CD86, also known as B71 and B72, and produce cytokines as signal 3. In the lecture on ischemia reperfusion, you've learned that signals released by injured cells or by pathogens will increase these molecules. So, when all these signals are provided, this will result in full T-cell activation, where signal 1 determines the specificity of the response, signal 2 determines the strength of the response, whereas the cytokines of signal 3 will determine the type of response, for instance Th1 or Th2. The molecular mechanism of T-cell activation and the mode of action of different immunosuppressive agents designed to interfere with the T-cell activation will be specifically presented in the visualizations during this module. We started this lecture with an histological picture of a biopsy with acute cellular rejection. This slide gives the schematic drawing of this situation. As a consequence of the inflammation, T-cells that are normally in the bloodstream will be able to go through the endothelial layer and migrate into the tubular interstitial area. T-cells with direct specificity will be able to attack the epithelial cells of the donor organ directly, the process called tubulitis. The interpretation and scoring of allograft biopsies will be specifically presented by our pathologist, Dr. Bayema, later in the module. In summary, in this lecture we've learned the following points. T-cell infiltration into the graft is a hallmark of acute cellular rejection. In transplantation, the alloantigen can be seen through the direct and indirect pathway. In the direct pathway, a large number of T-cells directly react with the foreign MHC molecules at the surface of donor APC. In the indirect pathway, CD4 positive T-cells are activated by donor allopeptide presented in the context of self-MHC. And for efficient T-cell activation, these cells should receive signals through MHC, signal 1, co-stimulation, signal 2, and cytokines, signal 3.